What up you guys, as you can see in the title of this video, will the Holy Spirit ever leave a believer? Um, I just read through this article, it is awesome, and um, it mentions grieving and quenching the Holy Spirit, which I've done before, um, but it's, it actually gives biblical, biblical evidence that the Holy Spirit will never leave a believer. Um, so, um, and there's, there's Bible scriptures in this, so it's good. Um, the title of this from gotquestions.org, one of my favorite ministries, will the Holy Spirit ever leave a believer? Simply put, the answer is simply put, no, the Holy Spirit will never leave a true believer. This is revealed in many different passages in the New Testament. For example, Romans 8, 9, which says, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. This verse very clearly states that if, if someone does not have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, then that person is not saved. Therefore, if the Holy Spirit were to leave a believer, that person would have lost the saving relationship with Christ. Yet, this is contrary to what the Bible teaches about the eternal security of Christians. Another verse that speaks to the permanence of the Holy Spirit's indwelling presence in the life of believers is John fourteen sixteen, And that says, And I will... Ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper to be with you forever. There's that word again, forever. So, it's telling you, you can't uh, lose something that's with you forever. Here, Jesus states that the Father will give another Helper to be with you forever. Amen, Father God. Amen. The fact that the Holy Spirit will never leave a true believer is also seen in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13-14. through 14, And that says... In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to praise of his glory. Amen to that. The picture of being sealed with the Spirit is one of the ownership and possession. God has promised eternal life to all who believe in Christ, and as a guarantee that He will keep His promise, He has sent the Holy Spirit to indwell the, the believer until the day of redemption. Similar to making a down payment on a car or a house, God has provided all believers with a down payment on their future relationship with Him by sending the Holy Spirit to, to indwell them. The fact that all believers are sealed with the Spirit is also seen in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22. And that says, And who has also put his seal on us and given us his Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Okay, so anybody who tells me that you can lose the Holy Spirit is obviously not going by the Word of God because the, I'm, re I'm reading these out of scriptures. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by wh whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. That doesn't mean that it's going to uh, leave you or be taken away from you. I'll get to that in a second. Prior to Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven, the Holy Spirit had a come and go relationship with people. All right, this is before prior to this is before Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. Prior to Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven, the Holy Spirit had a come and go of relationship with people. The Holy Spirit indwelt King Saul, but then departed from him. First Samuel chapter sixteen verse fourteen. This was before Jesus Christ ascended. First Samuel chapter sixteen verse fourteen ESV. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. Instead, the Spirit came upon David. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13 states, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. 
After his adultery with uh, Bathsheba, David feared that the Holy Spirit would be taken from, taken from Psalms chapter 51 verses 11 states, Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. The Holy Spirit filled Bezalel to enable him to produce the items needed for the tabernacle. Exodus chapter 30, ver 31 verse 2 through 5 states, See, I have called by name Bez uh, Bez Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, three, and I have filled with him, with the Spirit of God, with the ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and bronze. But this is not described as a permanent relationship. All this changed after Jesus' ascension into heaven. Amen. Beginning on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit beginning per, began permanently indwelling believers. So put something that's permanent cannot be undone or removed or taken away from you. Amen to that. Amen. Because, let me tell you, I've grieved, I've quenched, I've lived in unrepentant sin for years, unconfessed sin for years, and... Um, and it's just amazing that the Holy Spirit is still in me. I, I feel like I obviously shouldn't have, nobody deserves it, but like, I don't even feel like I'm a saved person. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from a heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled with the entire house where, where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire. The permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of God's promise to always be with us and never forsake us. Amen. While the Holy Spirit will never leave a believer, it is possible... Okay, here we go. This, this is the part where it talks about grieving and quenching. While the Holy Spirit will never leave a believer, it is possible for our sin to, quote-unquote, quench the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 states, Do not quench the Spirit. That does not... It's not indicating that the Spirit will leave you, because all that I've just... Uh, read to you guys from scripture and stuff after Jesus Christ's ascension the Holy Spirit is beginning uh, began to indwell believers permanently and sorry guys I think I'm I might be getting a cold or grieve the Holy Spirit Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption seal again a seal is a permanent thing Sin always has consequences in our relationship with God. While our relationship with God is secure in Christ, unconfessed sin in our lives can hinder our fellowship with God and effectively quench the Holy Spirit's work in, in our lives. I've, let me tell you, I've definitely done that before. I've definitely lived in unconfessed, unrepentant, habitual sin for years. But it's amazing that I'm that God is showing me that his word teaches that the Holy Spirit cannot leave a true believer starting after Jesus' ascension to heaven. I just got to put my faith and trust in his word. That's correct. Right, where was I? That is why it is so important to confess our sins because God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Chapter one, ver or First John, chapter one, verse nine states, uh, "Yeah, I mean, um, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness." So while the Holy Spirit will never leave us, the benefits and the joy of His presence can, in fact, depart from us. So, never go into habitual, unrepentant sin, sinning lifestyles. After I got saved, I started getting drunk. I didn't want, when I first got saved, I had this overwhelming power feeling of power from God and glory and peace in me when I placed my faith in Christ. And that stayed in there for like a long, long, like a month. Um, and then I started to slowly go back into sin. 
and um, I started doing the things that I uh, that I stopped doing before that I stopped doing uh, before I got saved that I stopped doing after I got saved. You know what I'm saying? So the things that I did before I got saved that I stopped doing after I got saved, I started to do again after getting saved, uh, like a month after. And then I started, the Holy Spirit's presence started dimming down and down and down. And then I, I to this day, from January of 2015, I got saved September 6th of 2014, I have not had the uh, felt the indwelling Holy Spirit's uh, presence in me, but His Word says that He permanently indwells people. I just read all those things, so that's that's really awesome because I I was fearing for so long that I was going to hell and that I lost my salvation, but it's still good to know that I am saved. And that, um, that his spirit is still in me, which is cool. Because if I didn't have the Holy Spirit, I really don't think I would be here. I don't, I would not see any change in my life wanting to serve God more, wanting to follow God, um, uh, wanting to forsake my sins. The sins that I know that I used to do, like getting drunk and ODing on medication and stuff, that I knew that. Uh, pulled me away from God, I have a desire to stop doing. And if I had, if I did not have the des the Holy Spirit in me, I would not have that desire to stop sinning, because it's the Holy Spirit that's that's pulling me away from those sins. You see what I'm saying? So that's awesome news that I still have the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the, even the slightest thought of change of heart um, to stop sinning. Um. I would not even want to stop sinning, I should say. Um, so yeah, there's there's that video. Um, like I said, I'm going to be posting videos now from stuff that's in the Bible. from That's uh, got Bible scriptures and stuff. Um, just to make sure I'm 100% accurate to what I'm teaching. And other videos that I make on here are just going to be simple inspiration videos. Like if I make up poems for God, I have one of those on my channel. Search for poems I made up for God or something like that. Um, like inspirational poems for God or something like that. Then I will post that as well. Or more Christian engraved rings, which I have a few, few more of those coming. Which is cool. I'm about at like 40 Christian engraved rings. Um, which is awesome. Uh, I call them faith faith rings. Commitment bands. Faith rings. Um, I wear them every day. It's different ones every day. Or the same one every day. And then I switch them up a lot. But um, it's, it's, it's to help me to keep my faith in God growing and it works because I never have the desire to remove them to stop wearing them um, even for a day you know what I'm saying so which is cool um but anyways I hope you guys enjoy this video straight from the Bible um got questions is a very good ministry I love this ministry actually it's a really cool awesome thing you just they they've got a search thing they could just search whatever you want like questions about salvation questions about hell questions about heaven jesus god satan demons anything like that and it will instantly find it and you, it, there's articles about it that people ask and born again christians who run this site led by god and the holy spirit answer them from to a biblical standpoint anyways i hope you guys enjoy this video and i will talk to you later